here. The problem statement is draw the shear and moment diagrams for the beam in terms of the parameters shown below as well as when the parameters are set to P equals 800 pounds, A equals 5 feet, and L is equal to 12 feet. Now P is this 800 pounds that I already drew in here. So first off, it's asking us to draw the shear and moment diagrams um, having everything in variable form, meaning we have the A as A, we have the L as L, and we have the P as P. Instead of actually inputting numbers for them, we first derive the equations all in variable form such that in the future we could plug in any values and be able to come up with the shear and moments throughout the entire beam. That's the main reason why it's useful. Sometimes solving these equations and, and having everything in terms of variables instead of inputting the numbers. The numbers are important after the fact and you could always come up with different scenarios, different dimensions, and always plug it into these equations and solve for the appropriate values you're looking for. So let's go ahead and do the shear moment equations for this. So just as uh, the previous video, every time when we want to look at the internal forces within a specific section of the beam, we went ahead and split up the beam, and this is exactly what we're going to be doing. Now the difference is we're going to be splitting, uh, we're going to split up the beam um, in terms of where the external forces or moments are being applied. So we're going to start from the left hand side. Let's start here, and then we're going to split it from here onto. P, let's call it P1 here. That will be the first section that we're going to be solving for. And then we're going to split up and solve for the middle section here. So between here and here. And then finally, we'll finish it up from here towards the end of it. And we'll be doing the equations for each of the segments. So there's going to be a different uh, equation for this portion of the beam, a different equation for this one, as well as for the third portion. Let's go ahead and start with this one. I'll go ahead and name the supports A and name this one B. And of course we have here B, Y, and this one we have, let's call it A, Y, as well as a, X. Remember, we're doing everything in variable form here. So let's go ahead and draw the first portion of it. But before we split it up into its appropriate sections, let's go ahead and solve for the reaction forces first. So doing the sum of moments with respect to A equal to zero, we have our first P here. Of Remember, we're keeping everything in variable form, so we're not inputting the numbers just yet. So we have P times the perpendicular distance A, and it's negative because it's clockwise rotation, so negative P A. And then the other force P also, P times L take away A. So we need the distance from here all the way to point um, the support at A. So it's going to be L minus this A here on this side. That will be the perpendicular length. So it's L take away A. Then BY times the L is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and solve for BY here. So just distributing what's in the parentheses here, we have negative PA positive PA, so those cancel out, and then BY is basically equal to P. So this is our first reactionary force, BY is equal to P. Now let's do our um, other support reactions. Some of force along the Y direction, we have AY take away P, take away P plus BY, but we already know what BY is. It's equal to, um, let's write this, it's equal to P. So this P and one of the P's cancels out. So we see that AY is also equal to P, the force P here. Now we can already tell just by observation, there's no other external forces along the X direction except for AX. So we already see some forces along the X equals zero. AX is equal to zero here. All right, so now that we found the support reaction, let's go ahead and start doing the equation for each of the segments of the beam, starting from the left-hand side. So now I just redrew the beam itself just for reference. Now, since we're, I'm going to go ahead and start from the left-hand side here, so we see that we're, my reference point is going to start from here on out here and my variable that's going to change is going to be the location and I'm going to name that variable 
x. So this equation that we're going to be coming up with is with respect to x, which will be a location. We'll just plug it into that equation to be able to solve for a shear and moment along any location within each segment. So now for x being between a and equal to 0, 0 being our starting point here, Let's go ahead and draw that segment for the internal forces. So now we went ahead and drew the section to the left. Um, we have P, the reactionary force, and we have the X going from here all the way to point A. Now the reason we don't draw the force P here is because it's right at that point where that force is being applied. So we don't really include it because it's not within this section, right? It's right at that point. So in this case, we do not include that force. If you could imagine just we're at, we're just barely at that point where it applies just beforehand. And so we that's the main reason we don't include the external force at this location. Now, we go ahead and draw the internal forces. We have the shear going downward, the normal force, as well as the bending moment at this um, location. Now let's go ahead and use our static equilibrium equations to solve for these unknown forces, shear and moment. So the sum of force along the y direction is equal to zero. We have our P and we have our shear going downward. So P minus V is equal to zero. We see that the shear force is equal to P. So within this segment of X being between zero and A, the shear force is independent of the location. As you can see, there is no X variable. So now let's go ahead and continue to solve for the moment. So I went ahead and named this section, section 1. So the sum of moments with respect to point 1 is equal to 0. We have that internal bending moment, m, and we have the p, so minus p times the perpendicular distance to point 1. Now keep in mind, point 1 is going to be dependent on the, what location we're looking at. So it's with respect to x. It could be within any any point between 0 and A. So the perpendicular distance is always going to be X. So M take away P times X is equal to 0. And we see that the bending moment is dependent with the location P times X here. So here is your shear and moment equations for this segment only. These are valid within this segment only. Now let's go ahead and do the middle portion as well. So now the middle segment, x is between point A here to this point, which essentially is L take away A. So from this point, this middle portion of it, this is where the equation that we're going to be solved for will only be valid within this segment here. Now to do this, um, you have to draw this middle portion, but you have to include everything from the left side as well. So you also include the first segment within here. Let me go ahead and draw it. So we see we're at this first external force being applied, going to the right, right before the other external force is being applied. So we're looking at this segment, but we also include the previous segment. So we have the reaction force P, we have this dimension A where the other external force is being applied, and now we cut off the this beam within that segment of between a and l take away a so let's go ahead and draw the internal forces so we have the shear here we have the normal as well as the bending moment here so now this is where we go ahead and just do the same static equilibrium equations to solve for the unknowns keeping in mind the location x here is between these two boundary conditions so the sum of forces along the y direction is equal to zero. We have the reactionary force P take away the external force being applied P. And then our shear force is downward take away V. So we see here that V, the internal force within this section is zero. So within this portion of it, the internal force within this portion. Remember, can't forget about the boundary condition between A and L minus A. So within that portion of the beam, there is no internal shear force being developed. Now, just by visual inspection, we see that there are no external force along the horizontal direction along the X. So our normal force is still equal to zero here. Now let's go ahead and do the sum of moments. 
Now, when it comes to doing the sum of moments, I'm going with respect to this portion where we're splitting up the members at the at the section where we're trying to solve the internal forces. So we have the reactionary force P times the perpendicular distance to this location basically would be X location here. Remember, this X is buried throughout any portion of where we want to solve for that shear and moment. So this is our X direction, the total length um, within that segment of being between A and L take away A. So it's going to be negative P times that X. And then our external force um, P is going to be positive times that distance X minus this distance A, which will only, which will give us here all the way to that portion distance. So it'll be that X take away A will give you us this perpendicular distance. Then plus M is equal to zero. So we see that our internal bending moment here is P times A. So within this segment, the moment is independent of the location X. So we just see M is equal to P times A. And now finally, our third section, our X is going to be between L take away A here from this location to L. So this last segment. So now this is where we go ahead and repeat the same steps as we done before. We go ahead and draw the beam starting from point zero or the left hand side all the way to this portion of it. And we include all the external forces and the reactions and so forth. Now, one thing to remember as well, we could draw it starting from the left hand side all the way to this segment, or we could start from the right hand side and go all the way to this portion of it. The only reason you will want to do that is to basically save time. You don't have as many external forces to analyze and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that um, simpler version of it. But either or option is that will still give you the same equation for the shear and the moment. So I went ahead and drew the right section of this segment. So we have the external force P. Remember this segment is between L take away and, and L. But right before that external force is being applied where you see here P, right before it. So we don't really draw that external force here. Now we have the shear um, force going upward due to our common convention as well as normal force and the moment. So we again apply the static equilibrium equations to solve for the, these unknowns and just by visual inspection n is equal to zero. There are no external forces along the x direction. Let's go ahead and solve for the shear. Now this segment, remember our x direction is res with respect to the left hand side. So starting from the left all the way to here would be this x portion and the whole length of this would be l so keep on going all the way to towards the very end this would be the length l and this would be x now we're going to be using this to basically come up to solve for which specific location we're talking about so let's go ahead and solve Sum of force along the y direction, we have V plus P and gives us the shear is equal to negative P. And, but that means since we get a negative, it just means our assumption of it being upward is wrong. And it's actually the shear is going in the downward direction. So let's go ahead and do the sum of moments. So since we have our moment going clockwise and our sign convention is counterclockwise positive, we have negative M plus that. P times the perpendicular distance to this location where we're solving for the internal forces. Now this location will be the length L minus the location X that will give us this perpendicular length along this whole section. So it gives us M being equal to P times L take away X and this is our moment. Shear and moment equations for each of the segments along the beam and each segment it will be determined based off the ex at what location the external forces are being applied for each and every scenario so depending where there's external forces or external moments that's going to be a uh that's going to be your location where you're going to split it up into its appropriate segments to solve for the shear moment equations. Now, when it comes to drawing the diagrams, let's go ahead and show you the convention.
So I went ahead and redrew the, the beam itself with the external forces P here. And we have, for the shear and moment, we have one for the shear force V. And we have one for the moment. So these are the diagrams, basically a graph. So the first step is for your, at the initial starting point, starting point zero, we see that we have the external force being applied upward P amount, whatever P value that is, is here. And then in this, in this specific case is actually constant until it hits this external force, then it gets pushed down P amount of time. So the P's will cancel, right? P take away P is zero and it's gonna stay constant at zero shear. Then you have another P, but in this case, it's actually, but in this case, it's pushing it even further down. So now we have a negative shear. So it's gonna be negative P here. And it's going to be constant straight all the way till we get to the other external force and it's gonna go upward P here. So this is our shear diagram, which basically shows us within what locations of the beam we have shear as well as the value of that shear. In this case, our maximum shear force is either positive P or negative P. And the positive or negative just denotes like the, the direction of the shear force, either upwards or downwards. Now you could actually use the shear equations that we developed um, just now and graph it accordingly as well. We could graph those equations that we um, previously um, received, except for the final portion. Remember that our sign convention was, um, we assumed it to be in the wrong direction, so we got negative P. So in this particular instance, it's a good idea to keep the negative signs here so you, there won't be any confusions when drawing the shear. Di diagram. Now for the moment, again, we have those equations so we could just plot it with respect to each location of the beam. Um, so since we have that, let's go ahead and plot it. So we see at the first external force, we have the value P A. And when it comes to drawing, um, you could actually draw the shear and moment diagrams by visual inspection. So, so when the shear is constant, this is where our moment diagram is actually linear. So we see that our moment at this point here is P times A. And remember the equation that we developed was basically the moment within the segments P times X. So we see that linear relationship and at the very top is P times A. So this is our maximum. Then within this segment, if you go back and look at the equations, we have M is equal to PA. So at this point, it stays constant. Okay. And then at the final section, we have the moment being equal to the P times L take away X. So it's actually this. You could go ahead and plug in values within that segment just so you could confirm this. But we see a linear relationship here. Then it was constant another linear relationship. So this is, these are our shear and moment diagrams. You could either do it by visual inspection or since we developed the shear and moment equations, we can actually just plot it accordingly. Now, when it comes to solving sh specific shear and moment, we would actually have values for these, right? We would have a value for P, a value for A, and we would actually have, um, in this case, um, pounds for the shear. And of course, pound feet for the moment. But it's, it's usually a good practice to get comfortable with variables because it could be for any um, specific variable. You could always change them up and get different results. And at that point, it would just be plug and play. So this is how you go about solving for the shear and moment equations as well as drawing the diagrams themselves. And the main reason it's important is when it comes to designing a beam that's going to sustain certain um, loads, we're actually able to see what are the peak moments and the peak forces that are being applied to the to the beam itself and we des we design such that it would be able to handle that it will be more than enough to handle the maximum moment and the maximum shear force 
for the main reason to avoid any failure.